Okay, so for target eight, you're gonna do something a little bit different than taking Cornell notes. You're actually gonna create your notes off some demos that I'm gonna be doing. So target eight, the essential question is what indicates whether a physical or chemical change is occurring? Target eight is identify. You should be able to identify the distinguishing characteristics between a chemical and physical change. So you should be able to tell the difference between a physical and chemical change. And how you're gonna do that is with some rules. So instead of doing Cornell notes, this worksheet right here is on uh, my website. I also will have it in class for you. You're going to be filling this out based on the video that you're watching today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the paper and then we're gonna ask ourselves some questions. And then you're gonna be able to come up with some rules on whether a physical or chemical change is occurring. So the first one, I'm gonna cut the paper. Okay, so we've got two sheets of paper that I cut. So let's ask ourselves. Did I add hot or cold to cut the paper? And you should answer no. Was there a change in color? No. Was there a change in size? Yes, because the paper got split into two smaller halves. Was there a change in state? Paper's still a solid, so there was no, oh, let me, I'm sorry, let me only check what, only check what happens. That'll work out better. There was no change in state? Did something dissolve? No. Then you're gonna ask yourself, can it go back or is it the same type of amount? So even though I cut the paper, is it still paper? If your answer is yes, then it's still the same type of matter, so you would check this. So if you check this box, same type of matter, or it can go back to parts, that is a physical change, okay? Now the next one is boiling H2O. So right up here I have water sitting on a hot plate. It's not boiling yet, but pretend it is. If it's boiling water, let's ask ourselves, was heat hot or cold added? Yes, we're adding heat. Is there a change in color with the water? No, so I'm not gonna check that. Is there a change in size? No, you still have the same amount. Is there a change in state? That is a yes, because water is going from a liquid to a gas. Did something dissolve? No, nothing did dissolve. Can it go back? So can I take that evaporated water and turn it back to a liquid? I can, and it is also the same type of matter. It's still water. You're just changing it from a liquid to a gas. That's a physical change. Okay, the next one, melting H2O. So I have a bag of ice here. If I took the ice and I stuck it in the boiling water, the ice would eventually melt. Okay, so now let's ask ourselves: is hot or cold added? Yes. Is there a change in color? There's no change in color. Is there a change in size? There's no change in size. Change in state? Yes, because we're going from a solid to a liquid. Does something dissolve? No. Can it go back or is it the same type of matter? So that one is a yes because I can take that liquid water and refreeze it. So it can go back to its parts and it's the same type of matter. Water is still water whether it's in a solid or a liquid form. So this is also a physical change. Okay. The next one is dissolved salt in water. So I'm going to take the beaker of water off the hot plate. And I'm going to put some salt in there. And I'm going to stir it a little bit. Okay. So that's our dissolving salt and water. All right. So now let's ask ourselves this question. Was hot or cold added? No, I didn't add hot or cold. Was there a change in color? There's no change in color. Oops, I didn't mean to check that. Okay, is there a change in size? There's no change in size. We still have water and salt in there. Is there a change in state? Water's still liquid. The salt's still a solid in the water. Did something dissolve? Yes. Then you've got to ask yourself, can it go back? So if I evaporate the water, the salt will be left. So I can put it back into salt and water. So that would be a yes. So it's a physical change. Move it up a little bit. Okay. All right, now the next one, it says mix blue and yellow water. Well, today I have pink and green, so we're gonna go with this. So we've got pink and green water. So I just added food coloring to this. So we have a color in science. 
that's called clear. So if you can see through the beaker, that color is clear, not pink. So I can see through both of these beakers, so we have a color called clear. Okay, so I'm gonna add the two together. Okay, now you might think it changed to purple, but ask yourself, can you see through the beaker? I can see my finger through the beaker, so it's still clear. Okay, so let's talk about what we did. Was hot or cold added? No. Was there a change in color? This is a no because it's still clear. This did not change color. Okay? Change in size? No. There was no change in state. Nothing dissolved. But here's where we have to ask ourselves, can it go back and is it the same type of matter? So, this one and this one. This is water, this is water. It's still the same type of matter, so it's still a physical change. So you would check this, physical change. Okay, and we actually could have this go back to green and pink, that's what I have. All we'd have to do is take some filter paper and the food coloring would actually come out through the filter paper and you get clear water again. So this one can actually go back to its parts as well. So that's how you know it's a physical change. Okay, the next one, now I'm gonna mix two clear liquids. So the two liquids that I have are sodium nitrate and, um, I'm sorry, sodium iodide and lead nitrate. Even though the container's a little cloudy, these are two clear liquids. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the two clear liquids together and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, so I've got two clear liquids in these pipettes. I'm gonna add it in this beaker. Okay, and what you should notice is you should see a bright yellow color. Okay, now if I had a little bit more of this, um, you would see that actually on top, I don't know if you can get that, there's actually a solid forming at the top of the liquid. That's called a precipitate. When you take two liquids and it forms a solid, that's called a precipitate. Okay, so let's ask ourselves these questions. Mixing two clear liquids. Was hot or cold added? No. Was there a change in color? This is a yes, because you cannot see through the yellow, so that means that there was a change in color. We went from clear to yellow. Was there a change in size? Yes, because we had a precipitate. Change in state? Yes, because I had two liquids forming a solid. That's a precipitate. Something dissolves, no. Can it go back? Is it the same type of matter? If you have a color change, it is not the same type of matter anymore. It means something new was created, a new substance. So I cannot check that box. That means it's a chemical change. Okay, now we're gonna go to burn paper. So, where's my beaker of water? I'm just going to hold the paper and the scissors. And then we're going to light it. Oh, never mind, that one didn't want to work. There we go. Uh, okay, here we go. So we're going to burn the paper. So while it's, well, it burned out pretty quickly, but you can take a look at it. Okay, so let's ask ourselves these questions. All right. Was hot or cold added? Yes. Was there a change in color? Yes, the paper went from white to a dark brown. Okay, was there a change in size? Yes. Okay, because the paper got smaller. Okay, was there a change in state? No. Did something dissolve? No. Can it go back? Once you burn paper, it can go not, it cannot, you cannot make it go back to paper. So that means a new substance formed, that's ash. So it cannot go back, so we are at a chemical change. Okay, makes a white powder and a liquid. So in this beaker, I've got a white powder. 
and I'm gonna add a clear liquid to it. Whoa, made a little mess, that's okay. So you added a liquid to a solid and those bubbles created a gas. Okay, so let's ask ourselves: was hot or cold added? No. Was there a change in color? There's not a change in color. Was there a change in size? No. Change in state? Yes. Okay, we added a liquid and a solid and it produced a gas. Did something dissolve? No. Can it go back to its part? Is it the same matter? This is not the same type of matter anymore because it created a gas from a liquid and a solid. So that's evidence of a new substance forming. So it cannot go back. That's a chemical change. All right, the last one I've already started. It takes a little bit longer for the reaction to occur. But the liquid that you see is called cupric chloride. So it's made up of copper and chlorine. What I put in was a piece of aluminum foil. Well, the aluminum foil reacted to the cupric chloride. And actually what happened is the copper and the cupric chloride precipitated out of the liquid, and that's what those dark red spots you see attached near to the aluminum. Copper is attracted to aluminum, so it precipitated out of the cupric chloride liquid. Okay? So now let's ask ourselves these questions. Was hot or cold added? No. Was there, what's the second one? The second one is changing color. That's a yes. Changing color because the cupric chloride, the copper precipitated out and you saw the red color. Did, was there a change in size? Yep. Okay, the copper changed size. It went from a liquid to a solid, so it was also a change in state. Nothing dissolved. It cannot go back. So I cannot take this copper and put it back in the cupric chloride. It precipitated out, can no longer join with chlorine. So that means that a new substance formed and we've got a chemical change. So what you're going to do based on your data is you're going to create rules for physical and chemical changes. There are six rules for each of them. So on the back of this sheet of paper, you're going to want to write out both rule, six rules for each. So I'm going to give you an example. You're going to use your data table to come up with the rules. So let's take a look at one of the physical changes. If you notice, you can have a change in size for a physical and you can have a change in size for a chemical. But the difference is, this one is a change in size, but it can go back. So that's a physical change. So one of your rules has to be, in order for it to be a physical change, it must be able to go back two parts or you could put it's the still, still the same matter. Okay, so that's one rule based on your data that you could say about physical changes. It always can go back to original parts or it's the still the same type of matter. Okay, so now let's look at our chemical change. Okay, if a physical change can go back, then a rule for a chemical is that it cannot go back to parts. Okay, so that would be your first rule for physical chemical. Your job is to now find the other five rules based on your data.